Cambridge, British Columbia. This is special coverage of the B.C. election. Tonight, Liberals celebrate Kamloops' victories. I'm incredibly touched by uh, the people of Kamloops, South Thompson, and trusting me with another four years. NDP disappointed with local showing. I think we can all be proud of the work that we did as candidates and as parties. And Greens make an impression in Kamloops' riding. This is not just about one election. We're not just a, a you know, one-shot party. We're a movement. Now, from the CFJC Newsroom, here is Bill O'Donovan. Good evening and welcome to our election coverage. It appears the province of B.C. is headed for a minority government. The two major parties in this election are each elected or leading in 42 ridings. And at this point, the Green Party is looking to hold the balance of power in the new legislature. At dissolution, the Liberals held 47 seats in an 85-seat legislature. Two more seats have been added, and at last report, both the NDP and Liberals were elected or leading in 42 ridings, with the Green Party holding on to three seats, all of them on Vancouver Island. The last minority government in B.C. was in 1952-53. Now, locally, the Liberals have maintained their hold on Kamloops North Thompson, as Peter Millivar succeeds Terry Lake in a riding the Liberals have held since 1996. Peter Millivar at this last report, 9,024 votes, Barb Netterpel with 5,441, Dan Hines of the Green with 3,786. Much like Terry Lake in 2013, Millivar finished more than 3,500 votes in front of his nearest challenger. Now, as despite the polls closing more than four hours ago, very few results are in from Kamloops South Thompson, but here are the latest. Liberal incumbent Todd Stone has been declared elected. Todd Stone with more than 55% of the vote with 4,903. Nancy Beppel at this point in second spot, 1,779, followed by Donovan Cavers with 1,706. With more on the Liberal sweep, here's Jill Sperling. Peter Millibar, the next MLA for Kamloops North Council. There were smiles and celebrations at Liberal headquarters in Kamloops as both Todd Stone and Peter Millibar were declared elected in their ridings. Peter Millibar had a strong lead in the Kamloops North Thompson early on in the night. It's always a bit nerve-wracking the day of, and, and especially as you start to wait for the counts to come in. So, uh, you know, we felt we were going to be around where we're polling right now, but you never know until the votes start to get counted, and, and so it's just nice to see all that hard work paying off. As the night wore on and more votes came in, it became clear Liberals would hold on to the Kamloops North Thompson riding. Obviously it's a great feeling and, and uh, it's uh, always uh, very humbling when you see the support in the community for, for you. So uh, yeah, just thanks to everybody uh, for their support. The numbers for Kamloops South Thompson came in slower, but early results looked good for incumbent Todd Stone. And when there was no further doubt, loud cheers erupted from the Liberal supporters. Friends, family members, and party supporters were elated with the results. I'm really happy about it. Oh, great, fantastic. Yeah, I've been routing for Todd for ages, and it's great to see him in. Well, I've been happy for our two local candidates. That's first priority. I hope we get um, a government out of it as well, and it's super close, so we'll see how the night goes. Todd, 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 Todd. Those supporters were the first to offer their congratulations as Stone entered the room. I'm incredibly touched. Uh, the people of Canada, South Thompson, entrusting me with another four years uh, to represent them. Uh, this is an incredible honor. I, I, um, I'm so proud to, to, to be living here in Canada, raising my family here. I started and grew a business here. Uh, these are some of the hardest working men and women you're going to find anywhere in British Columbia. And, uh, and, and it's just an incredible honor to, uh, to have been entrusted with another four years. Uh, I'm going to continue to advocate for, for what the people of Kamloops and Chase and Westwold and Sabinaw, the other communities in the riding, I'm going to continue to advocate for what they need uh, and what's important to them in Victoria. The Kamloops Liberals had plenty to celebrate, but they were awaiting the final provincial results, hoping for a Liberal victory which would put the icing on their cake. Jill Sperling, CFJC News. And while there was celebration at Liberal headquarters in Kamloops, the mood at NDP headquarters in the city was much more somber. NDP candidates Barb Netterpel and Nancy Beppel finished well back of their Liberal opponents, but they've been buoyed by the provincial showing. The orange energy was high as NDP supporters gathered at the Eagles Hall on Tronkill Road to watch the election results come in. 
feeling good. And I'll be much happier when John Horgan's our premier. Just really excited to see the results of the election, and I'm really hoping that the NDP will pull through. I've been a supporter forever, but I've only been a member for 56 years. With the NDP's campaign platform promising everything from $10 a day daycare and elimination of the MSP and tuition freezes, party supporters watched to see whether those promises resonated with the province. I think NDP have got the right attitude going forward, and I'm sure John Hogan will uh, prevail over this evening. Despite the enthusiasm, North Thompson NDP candidate Barb Netterpel was runner-up. Congratulations to Peter Melabar. You know, though we have very different visions of this province, I commend them for putting forward their name. I'm incredibly proud of the work that we've done, the campaign that we ran, the platform on which we ran. Uh, we left nothing on the table. South Thompson candidate Nancy Beppel arrived to a large applause from supporters and her campaign team. Campaigns are not just one person, it isn't just the candidate. It takes hundreds of people on, for every single party to put on a, a campaign and a huge thanks to everybody that made uh, democracy happen. Beppel's main focus throughout her campaign was the city's doctor shortage. While hopes were high for a win, it wasn't enough to overtake South Thompson Liberal incumbent Todd Stone. The most important thing is whether they admit it or not, the uh, Liberals know that there's a severe doctor shortage in Kamloops and something has to be done about it. I would have just made sure I knocked on more doors and I would have gone back as many times as possible to make sure that people understood what the NDP was had to offer. While there's no doubt the riding results were disappointing for Netter, Pell and Beppel, they're encouraged by the provincial results. I'm just really proud to see that British Columbians know that they want something better. They know that, you know, the BC Liberals haven't really been working for them. They've been working for the, you know, top 2% of this, this province. They've been working for the wealthy, the well-connected. And it was, we're showing up in the results tonight. Vanessa Ibera, CFJC News. Now, the BC Green Party did not run a candidate in either Kamloops riding in 2013. And while there were few expectations to gain a seat in the legislature, Dan Hines and Donovan Cavers each had strong showings, gathering more than 20% of the vote between those ridings. As Chad Klassen reports, there's already a lot of promise from the Kamloops Greens as they look ahead to the next provincial election. We're not a one-election party. We're a movement. This is going to take some time. Yeah. Despite the green defeats in Kamloops, hope for the future resonated with supporters, with the party just beginning to establish itself as part of a three-party system in B.C. We've reminded ourselves several times this is not just about one election. We're not just a, a you know, one-shot party. We're a movement. And this is about building for the future. So our horizon is a lot longer than just what happens tonight. And the Greens have results to build on in Kamloops. Donovan Cavers and Dan Hines combining with over 20% of the vote in both ridings. What is happening tonight tells me that 20, 21% of the people in, in this riding uh, throughout the North Thompson and the North Kamloops riding are saying that they want change and they want uh, the, what we're offering is Greens. So we're going to continue to build on that and this is, uh, this is just momentum for us as our movement grows and, and as this green wave expands. Obviously the fact that we didn't run candidates last time, um, this is a, a, a really good result for us here. We're, we're going to be hovering around 20%. And that's definitely a high watermark for the Greens and Kamloops. We've taken no corporate, no union money. We're not funding ourselves on big money. Both candidates certainly proud of their strong showings, but more proud they earn votes without any corporate or union donations. We haven't taken a cent of the big money in order to, 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 to do, uh, have the success we're having tonight. So that's a, that's a phenomenal story. And what it tells us is that BC politics, it, it can function really well without the big money, and we need to get the big money out. While the 2013 election was a coming out party for the Greens, their first seat in the B.C. legislature, the feeling in Kamloops is this is the beginning of something promising. We definitely led uh, a lot of uh, conversations, a lot of issues we, we, were, we were leading on, and, uh, and, that was, and that was fantastic. There's a lot of things that wouldn't have been talked about if we hadn't been there, and the, the team that we've built and the amount of momentum that we've seen has been uh, pretty, pretty amazing. All we know is that we've, the third party in B.C. has arrived. It's here, and it's the Green Party. And again, just before we take a look at the other four ridings in our viewing area, should mention again at this point, 
the Greens are holding the balance of power. There's uh, the latest provincial seat count that we have available. Uh, as the results come in, the Liberals leading or elected in 42, the NDP leading or elected in 42, and the Green with three uh, seats elected or leading in those three. And right now, to form a majority government in this province, you need 44 seats. So that's the way it is right now. Let's take a look now at the other four ridings in our viewing area, which entering the election were all held by Liberal MLAs, and there is little change. In the Fraser Nicola riding, incumbent Jackie Taggart has been re-elected as she pulled away from NDP candidate and former MLA Harry Lally, who lost to T Jackie Taggart in 2013. The final totals, Taggart 5,597 votes, Harry Lally 4,689. Now to the Shushwap, where Greg Kylo has been re-elected in that riding. He gathered twice as many votes as NDP candidate Sylvia Lindrigan. In fact, uh, Kylo doubled that total, 12,557, Lindgren with 5,953. Now to the two Caribou ridings, and we'll begin first of all with Caribou Chilcotin, where Donna Barnett has been elected for a third time in Caribou Chilcotin. She won handily, 7,621 votes to 3,296 for the NDP's Sally Watson, the former mayor of 100 Mile House, capturing almost 60% of the vote to finish ahead of Sally Watson and Rita Giesbrecht. Coralie Oaks has now been re-elected in the Caribou North riding, the former Quinnell City Councilor finishing with almost 50% of the vote. She finished with 5,794 votes. Scott Elliott of the NDP with 4,023. Hopefully, uh, they will be able to go into their homes sometime soon. Aside from the election, while well, a state of emergency remains in effect in the Lower Nicola, we'll have a report in just a few moments. My name is John Van Lindbeek. I'm part of the Abbott Wealth team and a certified financial planner. We really try to understand what's important to the client. If you have a disciplined investment strategy, that really simplifies a lot of stuff. If you really care about what the client is saying, you really care about the client, it, it resonates through. I like more of the planning side, for sure. I mean, pulling it all together is what's key. But you don't get that until you actually build that relationship. Help them through with the best advice we can. At BA Brewmaster, we take our business very seriously. We are serious about saving you money. We help you brew craft beer. You can vent your favorite wine. We put the sparkle into sparkling. We have your favorite island mist fruit flavored wines. All at 50% less than the liquor store. We're so serious that you'll love us. We guarantee your satisfaction 100%. BA Brewmaster. Nice. Your personal microbrewery at a state winery. Hi, it's Bob Taylor here at Denko Auto and RV Center. Denko has it all. Trucks, SUVs, cars, travel trailers. Denko Auto and RV would like to thank Kamloops and area for their support over the past 15 years. And now, their great selection of quality used vehicles and RV inventory is expanding. Coleman is the first name in camping and the trusted name in RVs. Come see all the new floor plans today. At Denko Auto and RV, you always get the bottom line the first time. Check them out, DenkoAuto.com. This tip is presented by Canadian Hearing Care in partnership with the National Campaign for Better Hearing. After any activity where your ears have been underwater, make sure the ear canal is as dry as possible. Technology and moisture don't mix. When you take out your hearing aids, always put them in a safe place, preferably the same place where you can always find them. And please don't try to repair your own hearing devices. We clean and repair them on site. Canadian Hearing Care, with two locations in Kamloops. Live life completely. Uncertainty tonight for residents in the Merritt and Lower Nicola region who are dealing with flooding. While water levels have subsided slightly, homes remain threatened, and the Thompson Nicola Regional District has implemented a local state of emergency. And while residents wait for water levels to recede, the weather forecast is for more rain on Thursday and Friday. Chad Klassen has more from the Lower Nicola. Lower Nicola residents watch as Gishon Creek rushes by, hoping levels don't rise too much in the coming days. With warm weather and rain expected later in the week, there are only evacuation alerts at this point, but people have voluntarily left their home, knowing it's not safe. There are folks who have decided that they, they should leave, and in a couple of cases, there are two that I'm aware of that uh, really 
shouldn't have people in them right now, and so they have uh, voluntarily left their properties, which was for their own safety, and they made the right call. Maybe 10 loads of substantial rock. John Paul's property right next to Gishon Creek may have been swept away, if not for the help of neighbors who stabilized the bank. It would be into the house now, it would be into the shop, but uh, I couldn't say, and they both showed up here on their own volition, and, uh, and Brent was here and he said, it looks like you need help, and I'm here to help you, and I'm here until you don't need me any longer. The bridge on Marshall Road is washed out and the Ministry of Transportation is working to remove the bridge to avoid any more blockages along the creek. It may take up to a year to rebuild with an old railway bridge the only way out. Yeah, that'll be the next big challenge for sure is, uh, uh, is infrastructure rebuilding and uh, you know there are certainly lots of ministries involved right now that are thinking about what they have to do and uh, we'll be working with them to in the future here to hopefully get things back in order as quickly as we can. The TNRD declared the local state of emergency to provide the district authority to conduct necessary work. We can put rip rock in where it needs to be or do other kinds of work around repairing areas and streams. That's simply what um, that was put in for. Meantime, the Upper Nicola Indian Band has issued 11 evacuation orders affecting 30 people. There are two orders at the Lower Nicola Indian Band affecting 11 homes and about 30 people as well. We are reevaluating or reassessing those orders today and, uh, and hopefully uh, they will be able to go into their homes sometime soon, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Healthcare is an important and much talked about topic in BC, especially in rural areas of the province. Well, last Friday, students at Barrier Secondary School had an opportunity to learn about careers in health directly from university students who are studying in various areas of the field. The hope is the roadshow will direct these students towards a career in healthcare following high school graduation. Adam Donnelly has that story. With a variety of options when it comes to post-secondary education, choosing a career path can be a difficult choice for high school graduates. I remember when I was younger, when I was their age, I struggled so much trying to figure out what I wanted to be, all this pressure from my parents, from you know society. Last Friday, some barrier secondary students had an opportunity to learn about a possible career in health care. A road show made up of students training in a variety of medical fields made stops in several rural communities in the North Thompson to engage with high schoolers in the potential for a career in healthcare. Quite interesting, you know, like I really like I really enjoy learning about all the different medical fields. Medicine is quite interesting. You, you need doctors. As I was growing up, there was a number of different influences in my life that were directing me to medicine. Joshua Rivard is in his first year studying to be a doctor in the Northern Medical Program at UMBC. His path to medicine hasn't been a straight line. I mean, in high school, I skipped half of my grade 12 classes. I, I wasn't in any means directed at medicine. Um, you know, for a long time in high school, I was one of the kids that hung out in the smoke pit. After working as an electrician throughout early adulthood, Joshua saw his mom pursue a new career path as a mature student, which inspired him to make a change. My mom, she went back to school when she was older and went into nursing. And so I got a, an opportunity to do some volunteering in, in the hospital. I did some stuff in extended care with her. I got to go to women's shelter with her. Um, and so that's like the, the practical uh, view I got of medicine then. After finishing his first year at UMBC, Joshua hopes he's able to inspire others who may not be in the top academic or financial brackets to consider a career in medicine. When I see those guys, I try to encourage them and engage them and, and, and help them realize that, you know, just because of how things are going in high school, has nothing to do with what's going to happen once you leave here. You know, that was ki kind of important to me because, like, I'm not the best at school, but, you know, it's quite interesting. So the vertebrae is the bony part that protects the... Spinal. Spinal cord. cord. <laughs> Engaging with students and demystifying the healthcare field is what these budding professionals are hoping to do with the road show. What I'm trying to tell them is that if you have the passion and the interest for something, um, it ultimately just depends on time. You know, um, it depends if you if you just got if you just keep going at your dreams. You know, in the end, you will eventually get it. It's just a matter of time. When are you going to get it? In barrier. Adam Donnelly, CFJC News.
Just before we get to the weather, we'll update you now on the latest results coming in in tonight's uh, provincial election. As always, it's been very tight throughout the evening, and now it has changed slightly again. At the last time, uh, the Liberals are leading or elected in 43 ridings. The NDP leading or elected in 41 ridings, and the Greens leading or elected in three ridings. A party needs 44 ridings to form a majority government, and if things continue on this way, we could see a minority government in B.C., but there are still a few votes to count. Well, let's take a look at the weather now, and this is what the current conditions are in the province right now. You can see it's cool in the Caribou, 7 degrees in Williams Lake, 6 in 100 Mile House, so I'll 16 degrees in Cache Creek. As far as uh, Kamloops is concerned, right now we're at 17 degrees, uh, much the same, Merritt 13, and it's uh, 13 degrees as well in Vernon. As far as tomorrow is concerned, it looks like a very nice day. Sunny skies throughout most of the province. A high, as you can see, in Kamloops of 25. Down on the lower mainland, look for 19 and 17 on Vancouver Island. Now, as far as Kamloops is concerned today, we got to 21 degrees, right around normal. Our record high, though, was in 2013, where we got to just over 32 degrees uh, Celsius. We're not going to see that tomorrow, but we are going to see a nice day. But Thursday and Friday, there is a system that is uh, blowing in to, uh, uh, to the lower mainland and will eventually make its way into the interior, and we can expect uh, showers and mostly cloudy skies through Thursday and Friday. A look now at our extended forecast, starting first of all with the caribou. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, but there will be sunshine, 19 degrees the high. But then you can see there will be some rain on Thursday, more rain expected on Friday, but uh, a nicer day by Saturday when it gets up to 15 degrees. For the North Thompson, look for a high tomorrow of 21 degrees, but then the showers arrive on Thursday and as well as on Friday, and it gets a lot cooler as well before it warms up for the weekend, 17 and 16 degrees respectively. For the Nicola Valley, you can expect a nice day tomorrow, 23 degrees, but then the showers appear on Thursday. Friday, there's a chance of a shower, but it will be cooler, 17 degrees on Saturday. As for the Shushwap, we'll look for a high tomorrow of 24 degrees. That'll be a nice day. Showers, though, on Thursday and a high of 22. Friday, also cooling off down to 14 degrees before it returns to sunshine and 16 degrees on Saturday. And finally, for Camels, we can expect a high tomorrow of 25 degrees. Then we'll have uh, rain, a possible thunderstorm on Thursday. Rain and cooler temperatures on Friday before it gets nicer on Saturday and Sunday. We have more ahead. Stay tuned. Financing is available, and they'll meet or match any competitor's price. Enhance your ride's look and performance. Canopy West, an Armaguard authorized dealer, the best in the West. Dominic Marine. We know how to float your boat. Hi, I'm Frank from Dominic Marine. We have many new land boats, plus a Mercury outboard for every boat. And don't miss our exclusive line of low pontoon boats, all powered by Mercury Marine. Mercury Marine, number one on the water. We have everything you need for your summer fun. We know how to float your boat. An exotic vacation. An incredible adventure. A trip of a lifetime. Capture your vacation memories forever with Access Picture Framing. Access Picture Framing are the true professionals. Certified Picture Framers. Bring your vacation photos, your souvenirs. Access Picture Framing will create a beautiful custom keepsake. When it comes to capturing your memories forever, choose the well-traveled professionals. Access Picture Framing. Get a cleaner, healthier home environment with Bath Pro. Almost all existing bathroom areas have some degree of water damage. Why risk just covering the mold and mildew? Bath Pro will replace your existing tub area with custom cut acrylic walls, mowing faucets, and a brand new tub or shower in just one day. Bath Pro installations have a lifetime warranty with very competitive pricing. 
Bath Pro, your one day bathroom professionals. The cover up just won't do. We make bathrooms brand new. It's been said the hardest thing to do in sports is hit a baseball. Well, last week, the TRU Wolfpack partnered with Camelot's Minor Baseball for a Challenger Baseball session. Challenger Baseball is an opportunity for young people with physical and cognitive challenges to take to the field with a group of mentors and play a game tailored to their skills. Adam Donnelly shows us more. New York Yankee great Yogi Berra once said, baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. For people living without a disability, the game can be difficult enough. Making baseball accessible for those living with a disability has always been a challenge, which is where the Kamloops Minor Baseball Challenger program comes in. There you go. We started here three years ago. We used to have a gentleman uh, stand. He used to do it, but unfortunately he passed away. So um, my program started with eight kids. I now have 31. <laughs> On Saturday, the Challenger squad took on the TRU Wolfpack baseball team in an exhibition match with former major leaguer Ray Chadwick on the mound for the pack. You'd think a pitcher with Chadwick's experience and pedigree would fare better, but the defense backing him up, well, they were awful. After just one inning, the Challengers put up some big numbers against the Wolf Pack. First year TRU player Aaron Lemoyne was hoping his squad could get back on track, but was at a loss when asked how. I'm not too sure. Just get some, get the team in rotation here, get some fresh legs, and uh, just get some ground balls. For Lemoyne and many of his teammates, this game was an opportunity to take a break from the serious training and on field preparation and have a little fun. It's a great experience for us, especially being in my first year. It's definitely been one of the more fun days for, uh, for us and the team at the field. It's great to have these guys out here, and it's been a fun time so far. And for the challengers, the chance to spend time and get to know the Wolfpack players made it an extra special day. What was your favorite part today, Andrew? Um, I went, uh, you like pitching? How about you, Nathan? I don't know. Playing second base. Playing second base. There you go. With the growth of the program, Stacy Willis says they're always looking for volunteer mentors to come and help with Saturday morning practices. For her, the biggest reward is the reaction of the players when they're on the field. Just the smiles on their faces, and like I was talking with the chair you guys the other day, I said if you come to the ball field in a bad mood, I guarantee you're leaving in a good mood because there's no way you can be sad out here. These guys just love playing and running and being with their friends and their peers. <laughs> For the athletes playing Challenger Baseball, those smiles are evidence of how much they love being able to get out and play. And according to Yogi Berra, love is the most important thing in the world. But baseball is pretty good too. Adam Donnelly, CFJC Sports. Just before we go, here's an update on the latest election results here in BC. The Liberals have been elected or leading in 43 seats. The NDP elected or leading in 41 ridings, and the Greens elected or leading in three. 44 is the number to hold a majority government. At this point, B.C. could be in for a minority government. Very quickly, let's take a look now at the Camels North Thompson. Peter Millibar elected there, winning handily by 4,000 votes over Barb Netterpel of the NDP. And in Camels South Thompson, Todd Stone has been re-elected as he wins handily in that riding as well. Nancy Beppel of the NDP finishing in second place. Tune in to, or I should say, log on to cfjctoday.com for all the latest results overnight in regards to the provincial election. We'll have more on the election, of course, tomorrow starting at 12 noon. Have a good evening. on the next Little Big Shot. Two sensational tango dancers all the way from Italy. We got juggling and unicycling from one Little Big Shot all at the same time. And we've got a memory champion who's skilled out of this world. 
How long would it take you to memorize a deck of cards? 30 seconds. I was safe. But it is! <laughs> An all-new Little Big Shots, Sunday at 8 on City.